Hey scholars, it's Miss Martin. So I'm on unit six, page four, and we're going to learn about tape diagrams today to solve two step equations. So our objective today is I can solve a two step equation using a tape diagram. So for our review for the DIN, write and solve an equation represented by the hanger diagram below. So pause the video and see if you can figure out what X on this hanger diagram is. OK, so if you wanted to write the equation first, we would have on the left side 7 equals and then on the right we have 3 X's plus 1. If you were going to solve this on the diagram, the first thing that you would probably do is you'd want to get an X by itself. So you're going to take away 1 from this side, which means that this side is going to go from 7 to 6. If you also wanted to show it on the equation, taking away 1 is just subtracting 1. When you do that on both sides, we're left with 6 on the left and 3X on the right. For the next step, we have 6 that we need to split up between 3X's. More thing about splitting up, we mean divide in math. So 6 divided by 3, that means X must be 2. If you wanted to show that on the equation, we would divide by 3 on both sides and we'd be left with X equals two. So for our preview question, how could you draw a tape diagram to represent the above equation? So think about what you could possibly do to a tape diagram. Remember all tape diagrams start just by drawing a rectangle and then see if you can label this tape diagram on your own. So pause the video and try drawing this tape diagram on your own. OK, so these are a little weird, but we do know everything equals seven. So this whole total would be seven. And then we have three X's and one more. So first I'm going to kind of block off where my one is. And then I have three X's, so I'm going to split this into three equal parts. For each X. So that's one way we can draw a tape diagram to represent an equation. So that's what we're going to be working on today. So let's look at our notes and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. So on each tape diagram, determine the missing variable. Fill in and show the steps to solve the equation for each tape diagram. So just like with the hanger diagrams, we have our picture and then we have the equation that goes with it. So looking at this one, we know the whole thing is 23 and we have four X's plus 17. So why don't you pause the video and see what ways you can think of to figure out what just one X is just by looking at the picture. So one thing you might have done has been like, OK, well, just like before, let's get rid of all the extra. So let's get rid of the 17. Right, and if we take away 20, 17 from 23, that means we're left with just six here. So these four X's together are six. If we want to split six up between these X's, we would have to do six divided by four and figure out that each X is 1.5. So we got that by dividing by four. Six divided by four is 1.5. On our equation over here, the first thing we did was we took away that 17. And we were left with just four X's or six. Then what we did was we divided that six by four. And we found out that X is 1.5 or one and a half. Let's look at the second one here. So see first if you can write an equation. So pause the video and write an equation that would represent this tape diagram. OK, so looking at this tape diagram, I have six X's, so that would be six X. Plus we have 11 more and all together I can see in the diagram that they equal 21. So why don't you see if you can either solve the equation or use the tape diagram to figure out what X is. OK, so if you needed a little help, the first thing we can do is if we take off this 11 from this 21. That's going to just leave us with 10. So we have 10 that we need to split between six X's. So we need to do 10 divided by six. And when we do 10 divided by six, we can open up our calculator if we need to. 10 divided by six is 1.6 repeating. Or one and two thirds. So to show this on our equation over here, the first thing we did was we took away the 11. 
that left us with 6x equals 10. When we divided by 6 on both sides, we were left with x equals 1.6 repeating or 1 and 2 thirds. So looking at the next one, so this one's a little bit different. They gave us the equation. In each box, there's more than just one thing written. It's x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3. So this equation is 5x plus 3s all together make 20. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can maybe figure out what each box is or even if you can figure out what just one x is. OK, so if you pause the video, the first thing you might see is, well, I got five groups that are equal, right? These are all the same size, all the same exact thing. We can do 20 and split it, divide it by five and learn that each box is worth just four. So now I can focus on just one box is four. And I see that it's X plus three is four. Well, if I take away this three, take away three from four, we're left with X is one. So if we wanted to show the same thing over here, First thing we did was we divided it by the five groups. Then we found out that we just had X plus three is four. That's when we then subtracted the three. And we found out that X is equal to one. Now some of you might have seen that there is another way to do this. So instead of this equation, maybe you had something that looked like this. You use the distributive property on the left hand side. So when you do that, if you're going to solve it on the tape diagram, it's almost like if you're going to take away all these threes first, right? So I take away all those threes. That's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. So once you take away fifteen, that leaves you with five. Oh, that's fifteen. That leaves us with just five left, and we only have x's. So since we have five x's and five left, each x is one. So on our equation, that would have looked like taking away fifteen from both sides leaving us with 5x equals 5 and dividing by 5 to find x equals 1. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I would like us to practice some like this because I think this sometimes is simpler than distributing everything out, but whatever way makes the most sense to you, I don't care which way you do it in class. So looking at this next one, seeing that we have the same thing where we have kind of groupings together, the same number of group. Pause the video, see if you can write this equation on your own. OK, so hopefully you saw that we had a group here and it was X plus five. And we had three of these X plus fives and altogether they equaled 20. If you haven't already, pause the video and see if you can figure out what X is on your own. OK, so if we did 20 divided by three to figure out what each group is. So let's get a different color. Let's use this pretty light blue. So I need to do 20 divide it into three. So let's get our Desmos open. And we'll do 20 divided by three. And we get 6.6 .6 repeating or 20 thirds. It's like six and two thirds. So this is six, we'll say 0.6 repeating or it's six and two thirds. But we also have this plus five. So if I take away this plus five, this 6.6 .6 repeating, changes just 1.6 repeating or one and two thirds. On our equation, what that would look like is the first thing we did was we divided by three on both sides. That left us with just our one group of X plus five, and that was 6.6 .6 repeating or six and two thirds. Then we could subtract five from both sides. And we we're left with X equals 1.6 repeating or one and two thirds. So now for exercise two, you have the equations you need to draw the tape diagrams. So try this first one on your own. So we have four X plus two equals 12. So pause the video and see if you can draw this diagram on your own. OK, so if I was going to draw this diagram, I see that I need four groupings of X plus two. So I'm going to do my best to split these up into equal parts because I want them all to be the same and I want them to all be X plus two. So these are all X plus two, so that's my four X plus twos. And I know this whole thing equals 12. 
So now if we need to solve for the missing variable, we can solve it on the diagram or we can do the equation. So let's do both. So I'm going to split this in half right now. So I have my two sides. I have my four equal groups. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is 12 divided by four to figure out what just one group is. So I'm going to divide my equation by four too. That leaves us with just what one group is, and I know that 12 divided by four is three. So just one grouping on my diagram is three. Now I can take away the two from the group, take away two from here. That means X must be one. So when we take away two here algebraically, we can see that X equals one here as well. For this next one, why don't you pause the video, draw the diagram and then solve it all in one step. So again, pause the video, draw the diagram for 4x plus 2 equals 12, and then see if you can figure out what x is. OK, so if you drew this diagram, you might notice some similarities and some differences between the last one. So this one had parentheses, this one doesn't. So let's see what this will look like a little bit different. So just like the last one, this whole thing is 12. But now instead of four of the same groupings, I have two. And let's say two is about that much of 12. And then the rest I have to split into equal pieces for my four X's. So I'm going to split it in half and then those halves in half. So this is X, X and X and X. So that's my four X plus two on my diagram. If you didn't get the diagram like this, pause the video and try solving for X now. So when I start solving this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take away this two. That will leave us with 10. So these four X's are 10. So on our equation, we take away two, we get four X is 10. Now we need to split this up by four. So 10 divided by four. And we're going to get X is 2.5. Two more to go and we can see these ones look pretty similar, but they're a bit different. So let's pause the video and try this third one, the whole thing, drawing the diagram and then solving it for X on your own. OK, so if you drew this diagram, the whole thing is going to be 19. We have seven, so let's see, that's a little more than a third. So that's about seven and then the rest I need to split into three for my X's of the same size. So that's my three X and my seven. So now we can solve for X. So I'm going to try doing it just on the equation this time. And if you need to follow along on the diagram to help you, please do so. So I need to get rid of this seven first, which means it's going to be left with just these three X's. So on the equation, when I take away seven on both sides, we're left with that 3x and 19 minus 7 is 12. Now I can divide by 3 on both sides and we'll get x equals 4. So we know that this was 12 and each x was 4. Last one, try doing this whole thing on your own again. So we have 3 times a group of x plus 7 equals 18. So pause the video, try drawing this diagram and then solving it on your own for X. OK, so we know this whole thing is 18. I have three of the same group, so I'm going to split this into thirds. I'm going to draw my pieces. Those aren't equal. Let's try that again. Draw my pieces as equal as possible. And each group is X plus seven. So now when I'm looking at this, I can see that I need to take this 18 and split it into three or divide by three. And on my equation, that means I need to do it to both sides. This three over three ones out. You guys hate when I say ones out, but we don't have a cool name for it. That leaves us with just one group that one X plus seven and 18 divided by three is six. Now we can subtract seven on both sides. And now we need to remember our work with integers. We have six minus seven. That will tell us that X equals negative one. 
So that's all we're doing today. So we're just solving equations using tape diagrams. If you can't do it on your own with just the equation yet, keep using the diagram. So for our practice, we have two here that you need to write the equation and then solve, and then two here to draw the equation and solve. So pick at least one from each. So one for number one and one for number two, and then solve your exit ticket for X, and then make sure you're going to Canvas and completing one activity from the choice 